I'd like to call this meeting to order this evening. If you would all rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Ms. Posey, would you call the roll? Yes, Madam Supervisor. Trustee Bussano? Here. Trustee Nevers? Present. Trustee Smith? Here. Treasurer Goodhue? Here. Clerk Posey here. Supervisor Dunn? Here. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, special uh, thank you to Brian Baker, who is the Chief Deputy for Macomb County Department of Public Works, as well as the uh, Chairman of the Great Lakes Water Authority. But the most important thing is he's a resident of our township. Thank you very much for coming. Also seated at the table over here, we have Jerry Wanglin on this far end, and he is the Water and Super water and sewer superintendent, our township engineer, Jim Van Tiflin, and his assistant, Crystal Kozak. I want to uh, make sure that you're aware this is not a regular board meeting. It is a special meeting for the explanation of water and sewer rate increases. There will be presentations to help us walk through the process of determining the rates as well as what's on your current water and sewer bill. After the presentations, questions will be welcomed through the chair. Please come to the podium, state your name, and there will be no three minute time limit. After your question has been answered, there will be one follow up question if you wish. After that, if you will kindly return to your seat or if you have a second question, please go to the end of the line. With that understood, I will turn this over to uh, Mr. Questions. Mr. Van Tiflin. I'm sorry. I think we were just going to go to questions. Okay, you want questions the, first? Yeah, I think that was the. All right, anyone that wants to ask a question, please come to the podium, state your name and your question. Good evening, my name's John Mahalski. Um, I've done some of my own math. I looked so, so, through some of your numbers. Um, you have some errors. You didn't do any uh, basically compounding. On your percentages or increases to like Macomb County, you show 6.3%, it's really 6.8%. So you're not taking a look at compounding it year after year after year type of thing. So the numbers are off a little bit. It's a 6.3, 6.8, so it's a 0.5%. Um, I understand that the differences have, have gone up from basically 2014 to 2019. We've had a 41.2% increase. In 14, we were paying for water. We were paying 3.1. Now we're paying 4.4. Same thing, similar thing in waste, 3.22. Waste now is 4.18 which is a 29% increase for waste, 41.2% increase for water. The one question I have is, is that on the service charges, they, they, they used to be a fixed amount. Now it seems to be a variable rate. Is that not true? Or is the, the, the service charges changed uh, over the years? The fixed fees have increased the last couple of years, yes. Okay, so it's a, is it a variable or is it a fixed fee? It's a fixed fee. Every okay. year it's set by the township board along with the rate. Okay. Commodity rate. Okay. At one point in time, I believe Macomb Township was supplementing some of the, pay, uh, the increases of the water rates. Is that no longer true? I'm thinking back in the 90s where, where we were seeing rate increases and uh, Macomb Township was picking up some of the increases. Is that no longer the fact? Actually, part of the water increase was absorbed by the township. So the, the increase that we had gotten from the Great Lakes Water Authority was 12.9%. Um, we raised the rate 9.9%. Um, because of there's a difference between what we get billed and what we have to add on for our operation. I can't remember the number, but I think it was 10.6 would have been 
would, would have been the increase had we passed through directly the Great Lakes Water Authority increase, um, but we only passed 9.9%. Okay, I'll let anyone else talk, talk. thank you. Hi, my name is Christine Garland. I have two questions. One is, um, can you explain in a way that we can all understand why did the rates increase so much this year, the 9% that you're talking about? Schedule here. So the, the, what, what drove this year's rate increase was we had a contract reopener with the Great Lakes Water Authority. During, and it's a regularly scheduled um, contract reopener where we examine things like flow and pressure, um, our, our peak hour and maximum day flow that we uh, obtained from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Um, they provide information from their SCADA system, essentially, their, their uh, monitoring system for uh, those meters. They um, based on the, all of this information, it appeared to us that our peak hour uh, flow increased quite a bit from where it was previously. If you look at that chart there, um, when, we renego when we negotiated the contract originally, those numbers were down. Then two years later, they went up and they stayed steady for that, th that three year period. That w we didn't negotiate the contract. When it came back down, in what year was that 2013 to 14 we had a contract reopener and it, it appeared that we were going in the right direction as far as those those flows go for five years that stayed the same because we didn't have a contract reopener we just had a contract reopener last year so for the five years previous to 2018 we had those steady um, flows in examining those flows it was obvious that we are using water um, for mainly irrigation uh, that is driving our peak flow to go up. And that's the main thing that drives our rate out in Macomb Township. Can you put up this one here? So use this as an example of um, how water is used in the township. So that July 14th day is from this year. So you can see that we used almost 19 million gallons uh, of water. The second one is from uh, Halloween, uh, just last month, and we used just under four. So you can see there's a big difference between what we use after the irrigation season is over and what we use now. Um, so can you pull up that next slide? So what we're what we're trying to do is get the, the peak down. So what, what Great Lakes Water Authority does is in the overnight hours, they will allow us to use as much water as we want. And what's shown in red there is that exclusionary period. So we can use as much water as we want. Once we get in that blue area, we, we can not exceed our peak. So when we renegotiated last year, we had to raise that number up to the 41.7 the 46 points, 40, 24.6 actually went down slightly. I'm not sure I understand that, well, if that graph, what you're saying, we can't go over. We, yes, we, we cannot exceed that 41.7. <clears throat> okay, that's the maximum amount of water, the, the rate that we can use at any time in that blue uh, time frame. So from five o'clock in the morning to 11 at night. So this contract renegotiation last year, that number went up. And, that, and, and we're going in a different direction than the rest of the system. So the rest of the system tends to be going down as far as water usage goes. When you say the rest of the system, you mean the other ways that we use water? All of the other customers the of other, the Great Lakes Water Authority. Oh, the yes. other municipalities. Yes. So the, the, way it, the way the rates are set is based on what it costs for them to provide service to all of their customers. So as one customer is using more water and the other customers are using less water or using the same amount of water, 
a township like us where we're using more water, there's more of an allocation given to the larger user. So basically you're saying because of daytime irrigation, that's why the rates went up so much. Yes. So which leads me to my second question, which is if people start watering during the nighttime, can the rates go back down? Or how long is this contract renegotiated for? Are we stuck in these rates? They changed it last year. Every four years is when the contract is going to get renegotiated. So the, the, this peaking factor that we have here is in place for the next three years because we re renegotiated last year. And so in 2022 is when this contract would, would get reopened. So um, can we look at that? Yeah. Yeah, so, well, yeah, let's look at this one. So what, no, the other one, yeah. So this data is from this year. So in the previous years, those peaks that she's showing you right there were actually higher. And so this summer, um, with, we hope, some public education and some enforcement, we've been able to move some of that irrigation time to the off-peak periods. So you can see that that red is much taller in the 3, 4 a.m. time frame than we have in the blue. And that's what you want it. That's what we want, yes. So it looks like for at least this year, we've done pretty good. We need to, if we keep that up the next three years, and we can show the Great Lakes Water Authority that we are in control of that peak, then we'll be able to negotiate that peak hour down again. So are you saying if people refrain from watering during the hours of five in the morning till 10 at night, then we have a chance of lowering the rates. That is correct. In three years from now. <clears throat> that, that's the best thing that we can do at this point to try and control that, that peak. If we were to do that, well, how much back down could we get it? it, it in, like back in, to where we were? Yeah, in theory, the, the, the best thing that we could do is to get down to where that max day number is. So and we use a, we certain we use a certain amount of water for for the whole day, and that's and that's what essentially that that represents, off peak peak. Then the, <coughs> the top number has to do with at those bad times of the day when everybody gets up and gets ready to go to work. They're starting their dishwasher. They're starting their washer before they leave. Irrigation system they turn on before they leave. That's bad. We don't want they we don't want that. That's not the way these contracts are set up. They're set up so that um, there is, it's kind of like when you, uh, for a uh, highway, um, when, you, when you're trying to accommodate rush hour, you gotta build five lanes. If you could get half the population to work overnight, then you wouldn't need as many lanes during rush hour. So you're saying Macomb Township is like the only township whose rates increased? This is the problem just for Macomb Township. It appears that we're a little bit different than every, all the other communities. Yes. Are, are we uphill like in one of these uh, illustrations? You know, the, the city that's at, at the top of the hill, it gets the most expensive water. No, what's driving our, our, our rate increase is the, is the peak demand. It's that summer water requirement. Okay. Well, I guess that's all I have to say. I, I know a lot of people aren't very happy about how much the rates increased. It's really hard to keep the grass green, <laughs> but uh, I don't see any way to do it except for watering your lawn once or twice a week maybe or something like that. Luckily this year we didn't even have to water that much because of all the rain, but yeah, it's still expensive. That's all. Good evening, John Parkinson. I've got a couple questions uh, for resident Casey Hogan. Um, I got one of my own, but I think I've asked it before. So rate, uh, one of Casey's questions was if the residents had a second meter for irrigation only, and I know we've talked about this, irrigation meters, separate meters, 
um, could the township monitor who is watering on, you know, off or peak times and write citations? Would this be, would you guys be able to monitor and tell who is watering where? Water meters aren't that sophisticated where, where they would be able to keep track of when the water is being used. It's, it's, it's a dial, it's sure. analog. So the second question was, why are the HOAs being charged for sewage to water their front of their properties? They are not. They're not. Okay. I'll let him know that. Thank you. Hello, Jay Lampke. Uh, I was wondering if you could put together and publish a spreadsheet that says what the GLA is charging us per unit of water, what you are charging us per unit of water, what the water department spends their money on, it's, are there any ancillary things that aren't just for water and infrastructure? And give us a whole layout of money coming in, money going out. The Water and Sewer Department has a budget that's approved by the board that's, that is public information. So all, all their expenses are listed in that, mm. in that report. Could you put together a spreadsheet and publish it to us, please? I think we, sure. I think we have it, yeah. Okay. Yes. And the other thing is, uh, I'll have to get back to you. I'll get back in line after. Thank you. Hi, my name is Paul Bryant. Um, quick question. I know I understand the, the water usage and peaks and such. What I don't see a correlation on any of the charts is new home construction, right? So no matter what, the Macomb Township is still growing. There's still a lot of subs being built. It's my speculation that in four years, this is not going to be better because with more residents moving in, our peak is gonna just keep getting higher. If everybody complies with the ordinance. But the peaks are gonna still move up because hundreds of homes are being built, whether they- Not, not if they're- Santa you're, can mitigate it if they use it on the very off hours, but there's still gonna be hundreds and hundreds of homes built that are gonna have the daytime activities. For when they first plant, plant their grass, they can get some leeway with the water and sewer department with regard to those hours. They still can't water in that morning period where you see, you know, that real big spike because that tends to be when when the system peaks. But according to this too, our overall usage, no matter what the blue is, is going to continue rising. The volume, yes. Right. But the but the peak can be controlled by irrigating overnight. Agreed. But it's not all peak. It's some construction. It's some new houses being built that you can't, I don't understand how it's not. A Absolutely. But if, if everybody else was watering overnight, then the, the 500 houses that we build a year wouldn't really scratch the surface on, on that peak, right. which is driving our, our rate up. 500 houses with these 12% increases. So, all right. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Dave Shipton. I have remember when the water rates were really low. I <clears throat> moved into the township in 77. And going to what was being said, the growth of the township, as I understand it, is probably one of the largest growths still in Macomb County. And when you look at this peak hour, you have businesses coming in, you have people going to work, you have restaurants, I mean, all kinds of additional demands on the water coming into the system. Is that considered when rates are figured for the next four or five years on that growth rate? Yes, we, when, when we looked at those numbers, when we re renegotiated that contract, we did have in our mind that we were building 500 houses a year. And by the time we got to the end of that contract, we'd have another, let's say 2000 houses. Well, our water bills are also, I mean, businesses also pay for water too. Mm -hmm. And yes. It, are they separate? I mean, or are they part of our total allocation? It's, it's all part of the, there are three meters that we have that measure the water coming into the township from the Great Lakes Water Authority. And it's everything that spins those meters, including businesses. Yeah, maybe we should just put a separate meter onto the people that like to use their water a lot in watering. Maybe we can actually let them pay for more instead of all of us paying for it. I mean, that's a thought. I don't know if it's possible, but I'd certainly be willing to put a meter in to show it. Yeah, the, the water meters aren't that sophisticated where, the, where they would be able to tell you what time 
a uh, certain amount of water was used. It's really just tracking what water is flowing through the meter. Right. No, I understand that. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name's Melanie Kern. I've, only, I've lived here for 28 years and I've never been to one of these meetings before. I live on Haverhill. It's uh, not the, the new and up and coming area of Macomb Township and I can't get up in the middle of the night and put my sprinkler on in the middle of the night to water my lawn. And all the little notices that come in my water bill, I, I pay attention to that and I don't water my lawn when I'm not supposed to, but on my way to work, I see all kinds of businesses and everyone else watering their lawns. This year, my water bill went up 25% and I don't have a pool anymore. That was last year. Two of my kids have moved out for over a year and it's 25% more. And then the Great Lakes Water Authority came into my neighborhood and dug up um, sidewalks that already had a nice, I didn't know what was going on, but I noticed that they were all around the holes that said the water department. And these, some of these approachments from the street onto the sidewalk already had the uh, handicap accessibility that just got replaced two years ago. So I just don't know what's going on. And my street's crumbling, but I've got really nice sidewalks that go down into a crumbling street. So I just don't understand what's going on. And then I'm just wondering myself, as just someone that's never been here before, I'm just being a voice, am I helping to pay for someone that's overusing their water? I think I am. And if I'm going to pay more money, I want more sophisticated meters. I want to not be that person paying a lot of money anymore. I've lived here for 28 years. I've loved it. I don't want to be forgotten in the not the new neighborhoods. Thank you. Some great questions. John Parkinson again. Uh, one more question from Casey Hogan. Kind of goes piggyback off of what that young lady said. Why are some businesses allowed to have a second meter and allowed to water on peak watering times? They are not allowed. Everybody is. Everybody falls under the same ordinance requirement. And I guess what I would like to say is, if you see somebody irrigating at the wrong time, just contact the water and sewer department. Send them an email, give them a call. They'll go out and contact the property owner and try and get them to comply. Right. There's, there's, a, there's a process that they follow to try and get the, the resident or the business owner to comply. So I, I, that, that brings me to this question. Um, do we have code enforcement officers in the township? Yes. Do they drive around and do any of the stuff that you're asking us to do? Because yes. I mean, this would seem that it would be their job to look at these businesses and, uh, you know, check the watering issues. I mean, I just think that's what. So I had one more question, if I may. I know I got a couple people behind me. Um, the negotiations made by the board to the Great Lakes Water Authority, was it a bad negotiation? Was it? Did, could we have done better? Not with the information that we had available at the time. There, there was really nothing. It, it's more about numbers. It, it's what, what, are, what are we flowing? And I can't, you know, Jerry and I can't tell them that, yeah, we'll be better the next, you know, four years um, if we don't have history behind us, if we don't have, you know, confidence that there's going to be compliance. So Sterling Heights, they are part of the Great Lakes Water Authority? Yes but their water rates are probably lower, correct? I think so, They're yes. probably a larger city than we are, mm -hmm. yet they negotiated a better contract. I just think that maybe we should have. It's not, it's not about, it's, it's about the, the water that, that they're using at the time. Um, maybe they don't have as many homes with automatic sprinkler systems. We, 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 we don't know what drives their rate and we weren't part of their negotiation. All we know is what was part of ours. And, and it was the, the, at that peak flow that drove that cost up and one more thing could you explain to the residents because everybody wants to know and it hasn't been asked yet why we can't have separate water meters for irrigation thank you um, I think I think there's a perception that what will happen because right right now the way the township works that issue is they cap at 40 units so nobody can exceed 40 units of sewer um, so, if, you know, you can irrigate as much as you want over 40 units and we cap at 40. Um, 
I think there's a, a perception that if we went to second meters, that the township would be able to absorb whatever the savings are um, that the resident would get from having a second meter. And that really isn't the case. The way rates are set is based on what it costs to operate the system. So let's say it costs $14 million to operate the sanitary sewer system. That's our, the bills that we're getting from our service provider, the, the county and Great Lakes Water Authority, what it costs us, well, those are all fixed costs. So if, if it costs us $14 million to operate the system and by having a reduction in the amount of money that we're bringing in through those uh, second meters, the township board would be in a position where they would have to raise the sanitary sewer rate back up so that we would get back to the $14 million that we need to operate the system. We can't operate the system at a loss. So, and then water and sewer would then have to also hire some additional people to, to run that program. Uh, we'd probably need another billing clerk, probably need to have a couple utility workers to install the meters, read the meters, and so on. So, you know, that would add cost. So the system is actually more expensive to operate than it, it currently exists. Um, then you would need to have somebody or a plumber come into your house and install a meter. Um, Crystal just had somebody install a second, she lives in Clinton Township, she just had somebody install a second meter in her house and it cost $1,500. So when we crunch the number, when you consider the rate increase on the sanitary sewer side and that cost, there will be some residents that even if they got a second meter would never be able to pay it off because they don't use enough irrigation water to get it paid for, um, especially with the cap. Um, so, you know, we would end up, basically what you're doing is you're moving around who is paying the bill. Um, it wouldn't really affect the township all that much. So, you know, your lower users would never be able to pay it off. Your higher users, you know, we've run some scenarios where it's, you know, it could be anywhere between, you know, 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, just depends on how much irrigation water you use. Um, so it's, you know, I, I think, to ad try to address that concern, the better thing to, to look at would be, is 40 units a good number, or is it maybe 35? Um, it just depends on, on, on how you know, the township board wants to address it. But you know, everybody needs to keep in mind that as you pull that number down from 40, the sanitary sewer rate is gonna have to go up. And an example of what I'm talking about is if you look at the sewer rate in Clinton Township and uh, Shelby Township, who are our neighbors that are close in, in size to us, their sewer rate is six, around $6 or more. Ours is 418. So, and I'm not saying all of that cost is associated with the second meter program, but, you know, because I'm sure they have other expenses, but it, it, I'm sure it's part of it. So that's, that's where we're at with the second meter. Madam Chair. I want to just thank the board for having this meeting. My name is Frank Cusmano. Uh, I'm going to address the uh, participants directly with approval of the chair. Could you describe for the, city, the residents exactly what the negotiation process is uh, between Great Lakes Water Authority and Macomb Township Board? Uh, I read the minutes of the meeting. It seemed that <clears throat> you and Mr. Wanglin represented the township at the meeting and that Great Lakes Water Authority had someone there to take the minutes, had an attorney present, had some other representatives, and it was pretty much a take it or leave it negotiation. Is that inaccurate? N no, there was, a, there was a lot of back and forth between the, the township and, and the Great Lakes Water Authority. It, it wasn't, you know, this is you know, what you're getting and you're going to like it, that, that type of situation, not at all. Were there negotiations that weren't uh, reflected in the minutes? In other words, were there numbers going back and forth before the actual meeting took place? No. Okay, isn't it true that despite the township growing that our maximum daily flow rate was reduced in a, under the contract the Great Lakes Water Authority can raise rates and also not provide pressure 
requirements under the contract? That is correct. So would it stand to reason that if we're growing and we're continuing to approve new subdivisions and new developments, that we not be negotiating a lower daily flow rate with Great Lakes Water Authority on the amendments to the contract? I, that's a question that's been asked already. I, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around exactly how we can be a growing township and we're setting ourselves up for failure by continuing to expand, continuing to approve uh, condominium associations uh, and, and homeowners associations in developing rural areas, which is, stands to reason just common sense is going to create more demand, not only overall on daily maximum flow rate, but also to the extent of peak hour usages. And that's a question I've had for quite some time. So do you have an answer to that question? Other than the fact that we are a cash cow for Great Lakes Water Authority as a northern suburb that's considered more affluent than let's say Highland Park that's in bankruptcy or the city of Detroit that's under metered or that the uh, city of Dearborn that's supposedly under metered, metered according to the reports of Great Lakes Water Authority? When, when we looked at that max day number, we looked at the historical information and we were under, our, our numbers for that previous five year period were under enough that we were both comfortable moving that number down, which actually helped lower our rate from what it would have been had we kept it where it was. Okay. Mr. Baker, I've talked with you one time on the phone years and years ago. I don't know if you recall the conversation, but I was down in River Rouge where copper pirates had cut water lines into homes and water was running into the streets. Has Great Lakes Water Authority done anything to even equalize or balance the burden of that type of leakage to the system? to provide um, balance and equity for the northern suburbs and other users of the system. In other words, isn't it true that the system is aged in Detroit from years of neglect and that now the, the, the bill has come due and that users, including Macomb Township residents, through the municipalities are having to pay the bill. And Is this on? Not sure exactly what the question was, Frank. However, um, Detroit pays for their water usage. Everyone pays for their own water usage. There are some intricacies in Detroit and Dearborn and Highland Park where they are working on getting better meters there. And that was part of the GLWA agreement that they would be metered. That is taking longer. However, if there is a water main break in River Rouge, for example, River Rouge is paying for that. Okay. So Just like if there was a water main break in Macomb Township. Okay. Macomb, Macomb Township is going to be paying, paying for that. And, and thank you for that answer. Yeah. Um, now, there's two sides of this. There's the water side and then there's the sanitary sewer side. What other options were explored other than rate increases? And this is not to you, Mr. Baker. This is more to Mr. Van Tiflin. What other options were explored other than increasing in, increasing rates to pay for the improvements and maintenance? In other words, was it explored to achieve the uh, reserves for purposes of maintenance of the system from bond debt, for example, was that ever explored? Was it ever explored to divide the township up into di special assessment t districts pursuant to statute where the older areas that have, didn't really pay their fair share because they was not anticipated apparently by the governing body of this township that there was going to be at a certain point um, maintenance that wasn't being accounted for in the rate structure or economies of scale and synergies of extra usage. Um, was that ever explored or was that even a combination of any of the above debt, special assessments, rate increases, was that ever explored or was it just the rate increase 100% including 
a significant and substantial service charge so that everyone pays no matter what to, to fund out this maintenance that needs to be done on the, on the sanitary sewer side. Are, are you talking about the Great Lakes Water Authority negotiation? Uh, or are you talking I'm, about I'm talking about the township for the sanitary sewage. Because it's been argued that we have this cost of service, which is a term of art under the law, that includes bringing a single drop of water to my home costs a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. And that the old paradigm of consumption, consumption-based rates has generated enough revenue because of Great Lakes Water Authority admitted this when it was Detroit Water and Sewage Department, that lack of consumption is the main cost driver. So the new paradigm is to maintain the infrastructure, to use your analogy, the freeways, you're gonna build that freeway and everyone's gonna pay for it. Irrespective of how often I use the freeway, I have to pay for it. And if I use it less and less, in the case of water with a consumption-based model, you have to raise my rates or my tolls to unaffordable levels. And that's my question. There was other ways of paying or building the reserves for the maintenance. Were any of those explored, including bond debt, special assessment districts for older areas so that they had to pay their share of the maintenance costs or any combination other than just rate increases and service charge increases? Bonds, yes. Um, special assessment districts, no. You have no bond debt as of right now? Yes, right? Yeah, we do. Okay, for sanitary sewer? Yes. How much? If you know roughly, I, I, don't, mean, I don't think I have the, the exact number of that, but we, yeah, we do have bonds for out, outstanding for sanitary sewer. It's suspected that peak usage is an excuse to raise revenue for Great Lakes Water Authority. Mr. Cosmano, if you have another question, would you mind letting the others oh, sure. ask first and get in line again? Sure, I will. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Karen Krim. I've lived in uh, Macomb Township since 1996. And like one of the speakers prior to me has never been to one of these meetings. Um, the couple of questions that I, well, one, one is a comment. I have been keeping records of all my utility bills since 2009, by far, the water bill has gone up the most. That's electrical and gas. It is up 102% year over year in 10 years. I have one less person living in my house. I've had the same property, the same setup, everything the same, 102%. All right, nowhere near any cost of my heating or my electricity. The second question is, um, I understand people don't pay their water bill. Nothing's done until they sell the property. Why? People don't pay their bill. It's been noted that they let it go for years. One person, I'm told, is up to at least $2,500 in back, back water bill. What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it now? Not when they sell. We transfer delinquent water bills every year to taxes, and they pay it on their winter tax bill. So that statement is not true. And we have started to put a 15% penalty on that as well to try to, to lower those numbers. I don't have this year's numbers yet, um, but. And those people are aware that that is on there. It's noted as a separate item on their tax it is noticed, bill. It is noticed, and it says delinquent water bill. If they read their bill, they will notice it. How long does it have to be delinquent for for them to appear on their tax bill? Anything that is over 30 days 
delinquent goes to taxes. Automatically. So you, automatically. Mm -hmm. Not notification to the, uh, do you notify the resident at all that this is going to occur? It's on their water bill, it's on the website, um, they should know it. Most people don't read it, it's also on the back of, it's, it's out there. Okay. And uh, if they read, mm -hmm. they, will, they will notice it. Some of them do not notice it. Mm -hmm. They have a mortgage company that um, pays their uh, ah, this is tax true. bill, and they don't notice it until yeah. they get a notice from their mortgage company mm -hmm. that says they're going to raise their escrow account up immensely. Okay. Then they call my office, and we have okay. to explain it to them. All right. Well, as I well got as, misinformation then as well on that, as which is good. Trash as well. Mm -hmm. That goes Same. to taxes too. Okay. Just remember, a hundred and two percent. What has my just normal uh, year over year costs for everything else, or CPI and all that cost of living, hundred and two percent. I'm just saying there's something majorly wrong with that. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Tammy Fenner Lamke. We have lived in the uh, township for over 20 years. And I'm in the same situation of, as a lot of these ladies. We're retirees, we're on fixed incomes, we don't use our irrigation, but yet when I compare Harrison Township, Shelby, and us, our service, service charges are a lot more. Harrison Township breaks down their bills and shows what they're paying extra for the interceptor from the sinkhole in Fraser. I know 11, town, or 11 areas are paying that. How much do we pay? We don't get breakdowns in that. Can you, can you give me an idea? I can, I can respond to that. So the sinkhole that occurred in late 16 and 17, um, Public Works, when Candace Miller took office, it, it was a week before she uh, took office. I but remember it well. We sold a bond for that. And as I recall, the average homeowner was paying $25 a year for that. And it was a 3.4% increase, a one-time increase, but yet it kept going because the bonds are 20 years. So... $25 on average for each homeowner, not per person, but each homeowner on their sewer bill is attributable to the sinkhole. Why don't we break that down on our water bills so that we can see that? I don't know who I'm directing this question to. Water and sewer does the billing. We, we, we could do that. Currently, they're all... Currently, that invoice is all part of built into the rate structure. Okay. But we, I mean, it's a hidden cost. Harrison Township breaks it out. Okay. Now, they're paying over $10 per water bill. So that's $10 in three months, if I'm correct. So, I mean, I think we should be able to see what we're paying for. Wouldn't that make sense? It, like I said, I'm a retiree. I'm on fixed income. I don't water. How can I know what I'm paying for? Um, what did you say the service charges covered? Because Harrison Township pays like $4 in service ch charges. Shelby pays 12 and we're paying 22 Essentially what the service charge is there for is, and I think Mr. Cusmano touched on it, um, what our financial person does is tries to figure out what it costs to d deliver one drop of water to a home. Um, because th there, uh, th there are certain things that are built into a water and sewer system that are fixed, um, fixed costs. Even if you, know, you go to Florida for nine months out of the year, there's still, you know, a fire hydrant out front that needs to be flushed, needs to be active so that um, the fire department can fight a fire. 
Um, if you have a um, water uh, part back up in your basement, you got to have water pressure. There's you know, certain things that we need to keep that water main live even if you're not using the water. Same thing with the sanitary sewer system. We got to make sure that it, it flows. Um, like I said before, all of the costs that we have on the sanitary sewer side are fixed. On the water side, 60% of the bill that we get from the Great Lakes Water Authority is fixed. It's the same amount every month. And it's, I mean, it's based on our, our overall usage for a uh, running you know, three-year period of time, but it's, it's fixed. So you know, the, the, those fees um, are intended to cover some of those costs that even if you're not a big water user, you're still benefiting from the system being there. Um, you know, it, just to, uh, to say that you're not using water right now doesn't mean that at some point, I'm not saying you, you could have people move in with you, you could have lots of things happen in your life and all of a sudden you're using a lot of water. So it, the, the cost to bring that ability for you to use the water is basically is, is a fixed cost. So from our, what our financial people are telling us is that our numbers are, are light industry-wide. I understand what you're saying with regard to some of our neighbors, but we don't, you know, this board, you know, Jerry and I aren't watching over that system. We're watching over the Macomb Township system, trying to make sure that this system is viable off into the, into the future. We've got, you know, money to pay for, um, you know, our sewer teething and cleaning and, and repair work. Um, you know, flushing hydrants, exercising valves. We've got all the stuff that in, included in those fees that we need to operate the system. And it's not having to do with how much water are we buying from the Great Lakes Water Authority. And we spend that much more than Harrison Township. I, I, again, I cannot, I don't know how Harrison Township based their fixed fees. All righty. Um, now you say the fixed fees are in the service charges. Isn't there also a base rate for units used if somebody is a snowbird, or can units actually go down to zero? Yes, there is, there is a rate that we uh, have, and then there's a fixed service charge that we have that's in the, in the bill that is shown up on the screen there. Right. Is there a base unit, though? No, we I do mean, not have a minimum number of we units. Do not. Some communities do. We do not. Okay. All right. It's making it difficult for retirees to live here in this township. Thank you for having this meeting. Thank you. If I, if I can add just a little perspective as well. Um, the water rates here, and I put a chart together on the GLWA average increases and the increases that this township is experiencing. Um, you know, on the water side, um, most of it, as, as has been described here, is the peaking factor. I mean, this, this community is largely a residential, newer residential community, and, and that's really what's driving it is the peaking cost. Um, some other communities, I mean, my goal is trying to keep GLWA costs down for everyone, and we have kind of been able to do that in the 2.8% um, amount in the last four years. Some can, but you're really in a battle with other communities. Some com communities are building storage, for example, water towers. And the reason they do that is to lower their peaks and lower their max days. That's something the township, I'm sure, has looked at. And there's, the, but there's a cost for that, and there's a cost benefit, you know, that that needs to be done in order to do that. But why your increases are higher than the averages? are primarily due to that peaking factor. So you're in competition with all these other communities. If they can get their peaking down and you can't, you're taking a much greater share of the pie, of the GLWA pie. So you are in competition. If they add storage, they save, let's say over the long run, that cost then gets shifted on to everyone who doesn't do that. Now it doesn't make sense, it may not make sense for every community to add storage, but it's something you gotta, you have to take a long-term cost-benefit uh, analysis on that. The thing with, with sewer costs, I mean, the sinkhole is very low in terms of your total bill. Um, but the city engineers or township engineer is correct in the fact that 100% of your sewer costs, that's how GLWA charges, 100%, whether you, you get any sewage treated or not, this township gets billed a flat dollar amount, and it's up to this township to figure out 
how they have to pay for that. But you've got two positive factors. On the water side, you're in a much newer community. You're not going to have the lead issues that a lot of these older communities are going to be having. Um, they're going to be spending millions of dollars to replace lead service lines. So that's something that hopefully you can look at and say, well, we don't have those costs. We're not going to have those costs here. So that, that's a, a plus. You have a combined sanitary, or you don't have a combined. You have a separated sanitary and storm system here. In the older communities, when it rains, that rainwater goes to the sewer system and gets down to Detroit to get processed at the treatment plant. They're paying for that volume to get treated. You don't have that here. When it rains, the water goes out to Lake St. Clair, and when you flush the toilet, it goes down to the plant. So in that sense, you're benefiting by having a, a separated system. Some of those older communities don't have that benefit. They were built much earlier, and it would it, takes a lot of money to now separate after after the fact. So um, the one thing that you're kind of hurt on, on the sanitary sewer side, you, you are separated, which is good, but GLWA charges you based on the volume of your sewage and the strength of your sewage, believe it or not. And that's something I fought against. This, this township, as all of Macomb County, the 11 people in the mid, were increased 5% in uh, 17 and, or, yeah, 17 and another 5% increase in sewer in 18 because GLWA changed the strength of flow factor. They said, because we have no rainwater coming into our system and our strength of flow is higher, they said it costs them more to treat our sewage than other sewage. I was the only one voting no. It takes two, it, there were six people on the board. I was the only one voting no on that because I didn't think that was fair and didn't incentivize communities to, to fix their systems. So unfortunately, we paid 10% more from GLWA because of that strength of flow factor. So I guess my, my main point is there's, there's some positives, there's some negatives. Um, certainly your much newer system, everything is, is newer here. You're not gonna be looking at replacement of, of water and sewer mains um, for many years compared to some other cities, so. Thank you. Um, I, I did have a couple more. Um, I can't control my irrigation, I don't water. But how many citations have been issued for companies or uh, individuals? How much do we make off those citations? I mean, are we attacking the problem? Um, if I might add, we haven't we haven't traveled the road with the citations just yet. We <laughs> that was in the recent. Board, I, re, I was at the meeting when they changed the, the citation. We feel as though we've been able to control it with notices, mm -hmm. with, 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 um, with notices, with door hangers, and then with a visit from myself or my assistant, we feel as though we've been able to control that. Okay, thank you. Um, is, is this a good time to talk about water towers? Can, can someone address that? Jerry, if I might add, the ordinance was just adopted, right. um, amended in September Correct. that allowed for the township to issue the citations. So the reason citations hadn't been issued prior to that is that we did not amend the ordinance to allow it. So that is something that we intend to heavily enforce in the spring and summer of next year. But we just had that amendment to our ordinance this past September. Yes, thank you. I recall that. I didn't know what we were doing before that, though. But is this a good time then to talk about what you've looked at as far as water towers? Yeah, we, we've we've studied storage. Um, we did that in 2011, 2012, um, as part of a, a bigger water pressure issue. We have a little bit of a water pressure issue at the northwest corner of the township. Um, that was right around the time that Detroit was going through the bankruptcy and the Great Lakes Water Authority was being stood up. So the township set that aside, didn't want to invest millions of dollars in a facility like that and then have a federal judge toss out all the contracts and have them renegotiated. And now we're stuck with something that really isn't doing us a whole lot of good. Um, 
obviously with the renegotiation that happened last year, um, we were disappointed. That is something that we can look into. The Water and Sewer Department has asked, because um, th there is a lot of maintenance. You know, they, the people that would run that facility don't work at the Water and Sewer Department now. They would have to hire some, you know, a couple of people to operate that specific facility. So they've essentially asked the board um, to try and get control of the irrigation through enforcement. That's part of the ordinance amendment that was done in September. Um, the public education hit that hard and see if we can accomplish the same thing without spending the money that it's gonna take to build storage. Um, when we had looked at it before, ground storage, which is what uh, Clinton Township has and Washington Township has um, for you know, a three million gallon storage facility, which is probably what we would, something in that neighborhood is what we would need. Um, that's probably close to $10 million. Um, if you're talking about a tower um, up in the air, those, those tend to be more. There's probably closer to 15 to $20 million. Um, so, you know, th there is a lot of cost associated with those, those facilities, and then they need to be maintained. So, you know, what the township has done, or tried to do with the second meter issue and the storage issue is try and come up with solutions that don't cost money, but accomplish similar uh, things. So that's essentially where we're at with, with the, the water storage. It's, we, we know it's there. You know, we're, we, we are prepared to look into it and, you know, make some decisions, but we want to see where we're at in the next. Obviously, with the, the chart that I showed you earlier, we had some success this year. Don't know if that's due to the public education or if it's part of, um, you know, just the weather that we had this year. We, we, we don't know. But if we can see that again next year, you know, hey, maybe we've got a trend going on and we don't have to invest all that money into storage if we can get compliance. I didn't want to be up here real long, but it brings another question on the water storage. Uh, the township has invested in properties. I, I would imagine part of the cost would be land use and, and purchasing. And we're putting in parks. I don't know, can you have underground water under parks? Would that be something that you know, might be considered to cut costs? Yeah, but most storage is above ground. It, you know, and, and at ground, Clinton Township sits, it sits on the ground and it's, I don't know, 20 feet in the air. Um, so I don't know that we own the property right now where that would go. Um, one of the places that we looked at before when we looked at this in 2011, 2012 is, you know, this facility here. Um, I don't know that, you know, with a tower. I don't know that we would want a ground storage tank here. Um, you know, there, there are good places to have those. We, our, our source for our water from Great Lakes Water Authority is mainly down 24 mile. I so the that. closer we can get to 24 mile, the better. That's why this location was, was looked at. Um, and we want to be relatively close because we want to make another, we would, we would probably have to make another connection to the Great Lakes Water Authority water main that is supplying us in order to get that, the pressure and the volume that we need to fill that tank. Because part of the trick is, to make sure that you can fill the tank in that overnight hour. And the Great Lakes Water Authority has had some issues with providing us with the pressure you know, that we need in certain times. Um, so we gotta make sure that that tank is full by the time we get to that high demand time. Um, Cause that's when we're trying to knock that peak down. It, you know, it's not May or early June, you know, it's July and August when it hasn't rained for two or three weeks and everybody's using water. And if their pressure goes down, we need to, be able to basically pump water into the tank. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, those types of discussions that we would have to have with them in order to get this going. And we haven't had those yet. Are they on an agenda or business plan to come up soon? No, not yet. The water, again, okay. the Water and Sewer Department has asked to have one more shot at the enforcement and education side of it so that we don't have to spend the money to build the tank. Okay, thank you for your time. Hi, John Mahalski, second rounder. Um, a, a little bit of confusion. Is that, say, 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. at the peak, uh, your uh, highest bar? Because if it's 4 a.m., it's contrary to what you're telling us, that we should be watering between 11, 11 p.m. and 4 uh, 5 a.m. That, that is what that shows. That, that we're wa that's the, the peak amount of water that we used on that particular day is at 4 a.m. 
Okay, so everyone's doing what you're telling us to do. N not everyone. I'm well, just no, saying well, that. No, what you're saying is you want us to water between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. No, 5 a.m. Five. Well, okay, that's exactly where it is. Your peak hours are 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. But we're but if if you see the rest of the blue, see where it, it peaks up there, that, that we're also trying to keep that down. Okay, yes, we've so been partially successful. Okay, so that clarifies one thing uh, for me. Secondly, how many pumping stations do we monitor? As people were talking about different rates and different percentages paying for repairs and stuff. Can we split the township up, which is 36 square miles, into zones? In other words, there are some areas that are consuming more water than the older areas that are situated. In other words, if you go down to the Haverhill, uh, down to Jefferson Meadows, the older subdivision in the north, uh, uh, in the southwest area of Macomb Township, they're probably water consumption is probably flat overall because those homes, very few new homes except for 22 mile road and above have been there for, for 30 years, okay? The newer subdivisions, which are probably consuming more of the water, should be paying for more of the rate. So can we break up the, the township into zones? So the areas that are consuming more, pay more. The ones that are paying, consuming less, pay less. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that that would be, I, I don't even know how you would, you, you would be able to. How to many pumping that. stations and don't we know, know what goes into various pumping stations and know from the SCADA data so being what is servicing who? We, we, we don't have pumping stations. We have metering facilities and they're all tied together. They're, they're not separated. So the, each of the three metering facilities all pressurize the water system at, at essentially the same time. So depending on where the demand is, there, one meter might pull more water, but that water could end up anywhere in the system, depending on where the demand is. So we can I tell, understand we can, what you're saying, but that doesn't make sense. I guess I would have to talk to you afterwards before, from, from that. Let, let me interject. It's, it's not Great Lakes Water Authority's you know, responsibility to set local rates or advise people on how to set their local rates. We're the wholesaler. However, from my experience in municipal government, there are communities that do their rates in, in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, I assume there's a flat rate here. Yes. Some, some do have an inclining rate tier structure. The more you use, the higher rate you pay per, mm -hmm. per volume. You can't treat one district different than another district, but everyone within the city you, or township. You use 20, it's uh, this much. You use yeah, 20, so you 20 could, to 40, you use this much. You use 40 to 80, it's this much. It's a higher rate. It's would a make sense. Rate. You could theoretically do that. You'd have to look into it. Others have done that. Like many others, I'm a retiree, and I need my money to play pickleball. So from that standpoint. What did he say? He needs money to play pickleball. <laughs> Frank Cusmano again. Madam Chair, I'll address the participants directly if, with your permission. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Brian Baker. I read somewhere, I think it was in a statute that allows consortiums of municipal water, uh, municipal water customers to be formed. In the Great Lakes Water Authority, are there any consortiums of municipalities or townships and local units of government that have formed to negotiate in a block with Great Lakes Water <coughs> Authority? Yes. Is Macomb Township engaged in any of that consortium there's, uh, there's no one in in the county that is doing that there are some in oakland perhaps in wayne there's i don't know three or four separate authorities that have pooled their resources but um no one in macomb and is does macomb township macomb township has a waste disposal committee does and perhaps madam chair if you could answer the question is there a similar committee for water and sewage or a subcommittee of the board and members? No, that's no, okay. And my old historical research shows that the quarterly service charge for water and sewage was the same at 675 per quarter. What is it today after the last increase that the board voted? That's the it's, service charge. 
So the service charge is now sixteen dollars for on the water side. On the water side. Fourteen on the sewer. The sewer side. And fourteen on the sewer. On the sewer side. So it's more than doubled in the last three years, or four years. And um, as I recall, and I was involved in this ten back in 2010, 2011, the rationale of the justification was when the increases came to Macomb Township, it was argued, but look at how much more Shelby Township is paying. Look how much more Harrison Township is paying. How do we know that the Great Lakes Water Authority isn't round robining the specific municipalities so that everyone gets hit at different times so and no one gets on the same page and understands that there are other alternatives. I, I guess that's a general comment, but. Um, Everyone's factors are the same. I mean, there's, there's four factors that go into your, water, into your water charge. There's your distance from the water treatment plant, mm -hmm. right? And, and the sheet, the handout shows that. There's the elevation, your community's elevation uh, as compared to the water treatment plant. And then there's the two major factors we talked about today, which is usage. It's your max day factor, and then the peaking factor, the peak hour factor. And those two final factors are the vast majority of the factors. All the communities are treated the same way, not Detroit. Detroit's a little different, right? They're not technically a wholesale customer. That was part of the, the whole bankruptcy deal. But everyone else is being treated these same four factors consistently. Now, some people's contracts have reopened at different times compared to others, but what we fought was everyone now is going to reopen at the same time. 2022, everyone's going to open up every four years, the exact same. So that's, it's going to reduce variability now because if someone adds peaking, you know, they're going to open up in 2022. Now, if you don't add peak or if you don't add storage or if someone else changes their variables or maybe someone changes the variable that benefits you, You'll know about it in 2022. But consistently, those are the only factors that you guys are negotiating with the contract. And they're treated the same among all 125 communities. Has it ever occurred that the rates have declined anywhere in the system for Great Lakes Water Authority since you've been involved in, well, actually, and historically, you may know the answer to this Detroit Water and Sewage Department as well. Yeah, yes. There, and where? Again, I've, I've given you averages, right? For everyone who is above average, there's someone who's below average. And there have been some, for example, let's say they added storage. They would show okay. a decrease in their water rate. Now, again, they have the cost for storage. So it's not this panacea world. It's miraculously, we got a lower rate. You still got to fund the water tower in your rate somehow. Oh, I understand that. But it does make us less dependent on these variable factors that Great Lakes Water Authority has been using to raise the rates. That's true. That's true. Is but that, everyone's treated the same, but it's you've got to now manipulate that game and say, where can I, you know, stop the cost from getting contributed to me and push it on to someone else, unfortunately. Uh, thank you. Um, and you may know the answer to this. I think I asked Candace Miller at a Board of uh, Commissioners meeting on the sinkhole issue, there was a bond debt that was still outstanding when the sinkhole occurred from the purchase that Tony Morocco, who had Dino Bucci working for him at the time, when that was purchased. Do you know what that existing bond debt was? Uh, I mean, maybe anyone on the panel. And then what was the additional bond debt that was incurred to repair it? As I recall, so this was all pre-me, but as I recall, in 2009, mm -hmm. uh, Public Works uh, Commissioner Morocco purchased the MID system from the city of Detroit, and I believe that was $95 million. 95. Some of that $95 million was still outstanding debt from the 2004 sinkhole. So is it a fair statement that if our public officials make bad decisions that everyone just pays we, we the, the 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 populace the residents whoever's using that system whatever it may be including the is it called the intermediate system what what what, what was the term the macomb intermediate 
Macomb Intermediate. The mid. And it yeah. had failed several times before that, as, as I recall. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it was a bad business decision, and as a result, we're all going to be paying well, other me, tax bills. Let me say a couple of things. The, and I'm not blaming you or Candace Miller. No, no, no. Let me, and let me speak to, to I mean, since we've become, since I started in 2016 with Candace Miller, we have done a couple things. And we've gotten a benefit from the Great Lakes Water Authority now just this year. The mid, which is the these eleven communities of which Macomb Township is in, we are now saving eight million dollars a year on sewer costs mm -hmm. from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Um, that was something we finally got done and accomplished. Now, unfortunately, we have a need for the for improvements um, that we have to pay for, not in the mid system, but in the OMID system, and it's a little confusing, but. $8 million a year is now going to be able to fund $88 million worth of improvements that we would have had to have paid for, but now we at least have a funding source from the Great Lakes Water Authority to pay for. So that to me is an, an accomplishment. And, and let me speak to the 2016 sinkhole. We are currently in litigation on that matter. The board's are, you know, aware of that, and we've sent out um, informational to all the mid communities, we are currently in mediation on, on that and seeking insurance funds on behalf of the communities. And thank you for that. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. John Parkinson again. Madam Chair, I'd like to uh, apologize for not addressing my comments earlier through you as per your instructions earlier. Um, if it pleases the board, I will direct my questions to the necessary uh, media. Also, I'd like to thank the board for putting on this meeting because many, obviously you see many residents showed up in force to address questions or to hear what was going on with the water rates. Um, so I have a few more questions. Um, we, talked, we talked a little bit in length about these water towers, um, Great Lakes Water Authority says that it's the cheapest way to get water, right? The cheapest way to service the residents. So we talked about whether or not we're going to re-examine re this thing. Uh, I think it would behoove the board to do so as, uh, I mean, we're buying $1.8 million properties that we probably didn't need, and we could have put that money towards um, the water tower or water rates. Um, maybe even lowered some water rates that way. I'm not sure how that works, but that's just my view. Um, so the next question is, um, Mr. Van Tiflin, you talked earlier about uh, water hydrants, and you said something about flushing them as part of maintenance. Me being a uh, contractor and a previous firefighter, um, are, hyd are our hydrants wet or are they dry hydrants? They're wet. They're considered. So it, every year, whatever hydrants get used get flushed, pumped down, um, so it. that they're winterized. So are you aware that in the uh, Darwin sub that they're using hydrants to still work on the project? Gary, you might know this, the relining project. And I just want to make sure that those hydrants get flushed so that our residents aren't stuck with uh, frozen hydrants. And we still have a, couple, a few hundred That's hydrants we're aware to do. of that. And the contractor that we've hired is responsible for pumping them every evening. Awesome. One more question. This might be to the board. Um, a lot of residents are up in arms about when the new water rates take effect. Can we address that? When exactly the new water rates take Mr. effect? Mr. Wangland can probably address that. The water bills that were mailed out in October had the first round of new rates. I think Crystal's got that example of that on the screen right there. So that's why their bill was ex exponentially higher? Is this why? Because the new water rates were elevated? Well, that could be a small portion of it. However, the bill that came in the mail uh, did include the summer usage. Okay, so that was Ju retroactive to July. Although I heard July, that, July, August, and I September. heard that that wasn't going to happen. That's something I heard. I mean, I don't know where I heard that from, but somebody said that that was not going to happen. That retroactive wasn't going to happen because it would have been illegal. Is that true? Retroactive, ad, you know, going back to July. And and obviously hindsight is 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 twenty twenty and and, but. That retroactive word probably was a bad choice of words. The, probably the correct phrase should have been, the next billing cycle will be applicable to the new rate. Right. So as, as in the new billing cycle, not 
the previous billing cycle because we guys we you know we voted you voted to raise the rates after the previous billing cycle correct anyone got that answer say that again john yeah. so so when the board voted to raise the rates on september 20 great lakes water authority uh their um suggestion so what day was that september 25th september I was. and 25th i believe what months were the billing cycles for the water that was billed out in october july, july august, august september september you're correct so therefore the water the water increase should have been on the next billing cycle right The bills that went out in September had the old rate on them. Right. The bills that went out at the end of October had the new rates on them. Okay. But let me also, as the wholesaler, Macomb Township is paying the higher rate July 1st. Okay. Okay. So it's not like they're... So, but the, they so the residents are getting penalized. Right. We lost money. We're getting, the residents are getting penalized for something that they didn't vote on or they didn't approve. I mean, the board, in good conscience, votes for us. Suicide, too, yeah. Also on the suicide, it's July 1st. Yeah, suicide and water was both effective. The, the higher rates, well, sewer, I think it was two, two and a half percent, but the wa higher water and sewer rates were both effective to the township July 1. Right, so now what can we expect going further? Are we going to increase more? Because I think, I know I was here at that meeting when, when the, uh, young lady presented this information, but a lot of residents weren't. So um, is it gonna be a 12% increase? What, or a $12 increase or whatever it was on, on that, um, on her slide? We haven't determined what the next year's rates are. The Great Lakes Water Authority, uh, OMID, MID have not determined what their rates are gonna be yet. So those, those usually come out after the first of the year. So what you're saying is we're probably gonna go higher I, we, we don't know. We have no idea what they're, what, what they're going to do. Awesome. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Please. Run up and get in line. Yeah. I, I'm supposed to say, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Like I said, I've never done this before. So thank you for letting me address my issues. Um, you had mentioned the gentleman in the middle. I can't see that far. Um, that the rainwater coming into our systems, would that be a variable that would benefit us? No, actually, Macomb Township has benefited from that because you have a, a, a pretty new system where there's not these leaks where rainwater can come in. Like off the streets, the drains and all that, off the streets and in backyards? Correct, and because you have a separated system where all the storm drains go out to Lake St. Clair, you're not treating that, you're not paying to treat that water. So if they're not clogged, we do a better job? No, it's still going to go out to Lake St. Clair. I was just making the I mean, analogy we that get more in, in, there? in older communities, they're paying to treat the rainwater on their water and sewer bill. You're fortunate you don't have to do that. And does anyone unclog those rainwater Edge areas? Basins? Yeah. The, the county or the Office of Public Works is, has m the majority of those drains. But not does, the, anyone do, does anyone do it? Because I, I see them clogged with garbage and leaves all the time. So, I mean, I'm just wondering if that's going to benefit us, not only help the environment, but is that someone's job? The, the county department of roads or, or the drain office, if it's a county drain. And then you're our voice, so you'll make sure that that gets done for us? We will pass the word along if it's reported to us. And then I just had a couple. So... Up from today's meeting, we are going to try to itemize our water bills now. Is that what we can look forward to? Is we that can on definitely the... look at that? Yes. Okay, and this is a fixed rate for four more years. Then we get to renegotiate. So if we get our peak hours down, the, the, the rate is not fixed for the next four years it, or three years from now. Three. It's yeah. it's Sorry. those the peaking factors that were up on the screen earlier. Those are the, the items that are fixed. So, and as Brian mentioned, the, the fact that all the communities renegotiated within the last year should provide some rate stability going forward, at least until that 2022 when everybody reopens again. And in the meantime, we are still going to try to enforce the hours of when you're supposed to water and when you're not. And 
Are we going to do that too? Yes, that's correct. I, from the GLWA side, we have not seen the budget yet. And we have, and again, the fiscal year starts July 1st. We would see the budget in January in a couple months. But I would think it would average towards, you would be averaging near the average. And the average for the last four years is 2.8%. I would think because there are no reopeners, you've already had your peaking factors factored in. I don't think you've had any exceedances. I think you'd be more in line with around that 2.8%, give or take. It's not going to be like this year where you had an increase of 12.9% from Great Lakes Water Authority. Primary, you know, uh, what, 10, 8.7% of that was because of the peaking factor. I'll, as a resident, I'll just feel more comfortable if I'm trying to do my job, if I see, you know, a presence of you guys trying to do your job too, that would make me feel good and make me try harder. Thank you very much. If I may, yes. um, if you notice a uh, sewer detention that is clogged or blocked mm -hmm. on Macomb County Department of Roads website, mm -hmm. you can log right on the website and you can just um, type in what you've seen or a complaint or an issue or concern you have mm -hmm. and they will address it and respond to as well. Thank you. Yes, um, Thank you. also with the roads, it's the same, same thing. The county owns the roads in the township. If you have a concern with a road, um, a, you mentioned a crumbling road, you can put that issue in the website as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And Madam Chair, if I may, you know, if during the summer, if you're driving around and you in fact see watering, lawns being watered in the not in the, in, not in the uh, proper time or businesses, uh, areas in subdivisions that have landscape and so forth, pick up the phone and call and they can send somebody out. I, you know, I suggest that you do that. And uh, pretty soon, if people have visitors coming to their door and then they get fined, it'll stop. So you're in control a little bit of that. Thank you. So I got a couple, couple more questions on behalf of resident. Um, they want to ask uh, if we could FOIA request the Macomb Township GLWA contract and the Sterling Heights contract with the GLWA. Can we get a copy of the contracts via FOIA? Certainly. Awesome. Next question. Someone, someone said that you guys don't seem so upset by all these questions and all the residents. Um, they just want to know why you aren't upset and why you don't seem like you're upset. Is it, oh, well, just pay it, or are you guys just being professional? And I, in my opinion, I think you're just you know, sitting up and you're hearing our questions. But the question was asked, so I'm going to ask it for the resident. Um, they just say that you, you don't seem so upset by any of this or bother. Chad, I'll address that. We, um, Thank you. I, I've said many, many times what happens at board meetings and something like this is just a snapshot of what's really going on. Um, going into this meeting, um, I, like I think the rest of my colleagues, I don't want to speak for them, but I think they'll agree that we agreed to let people that I consider experts, the engineers, I mean, I talked to Brian, Brian made some very complicated issues seem really easy to me. I, we had, what, about a 20, 25 minute conversation. And we've had the, these conversations going into when we had to make that vote. One of the toughest votes, you know, there's a couple votes that's been really tough that I had to take. I felt like I had to take a yes vote based on our contract. Mm -hmm. and, and when you see when we FOIA the contract, there are penalties if we don't pay that. I actually asked that when a consultant was here. I didn't get a real clear answer, but I didn't, um, uh, I wasn't sure, okay, if we don't, you know, vote to raise those rates, mm -hmm. and, and, and are we in violation of the contract? I still 100% don't know, you know. If, if we took that vote as a board and said, okay, we're not going to agree with those rates, okay? I have a feeling that there could be, based on the contract, some repercussions for that. But I can tell you tonight, um, I think professional is what we're trying to be right now. If you know me, um, I have definitely um, been up here. Um, I'll voice my opinion, and you know, but I, I know going into this meeting, like I said, that we were going to let them talk um, because sometimes they t know a little bit more of the technical side and talking to Brian, Brian made technical issues seem very easy to me and simple. In my opinion, I'm, this is just my personal opinion, than the consultant did when she was here. At times I, I, I was a little um, 
I knew what she was saying, but trying to articulate her words to residents, mm -hmm. I think was a little bit more difficult. But, but I think there was a decision made that we were going to sit and let them answer resident questions tonight. So um, that I'm, I just want to respond to you. So. Well, I, f I figured this much. I just had to ask the question on behalf of the resident. And the other, the other thing was, I was at the meeting that you were at, and then you were questioning, you know, what if we don't agree? And I, I too was scratching my head because you didn't get the answer that I think we wanted, but um, we were probably, you probably had to vote a yes on that to do the water rate increase. I understand that. Um, so I want to thank you all for your time. It, and in fairness to the board that night, we did ask a lot of questions. That might have been an hour presentation at least, and I think at least a half hour were some extremely tough questions for that consultant. So I feel I asked tough questions that night going into the vote. But thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. Good. Yeah. Um, I have to say that I'm happy that everybody's here asking questions. My department, as well as the water department, we get a lot of phone calls. And we are, my department and the water and sewer girls and people over there <coughs> try to explain to people um, the reason, show them the chart, how much water usage. We take a lot of time to try to get people to understand. Um, it's hard, and I'm glad that people are here so that they can ask these questions. Uh, and because I mean, there are some questions that uh, are not fact that are going, you know, answers out there that are not fact. So it's a good time to clear things up and get to know for yourself. Thank you, Frank Cusmano, uh, third round. Um, it was mentioned by Mr. Van Tiflin at a previous meeting that at some point we used to get our water through the Mount Clemens water system. My question is, how long ago was that and has there been any attempt to find other sources to somehow break the monopoly? And as a follow-up question to that, is Great Lakes Water Authority make it an all or nothing proposition for the contract? In other words, we have to get all of our requirements from Great Lakes Water Authority and not blend with perhaps from other sources and wean ourselves off possibly for purposes of um, leveraging our position with the contract negotiations. The contract does say that Great Lakes Water Authority is our sole provider. We can't mix water from a, a different um, municipality or a different uh, treatment plant. Um, Macomb Township, I can't remember the exact year, but I want to say it was in the early 80s is when uh, we switched to the great or to DWSD at the time um, and have been with them since. So the original water mains that were built in the township were built in the mid uh, 60s, I think 1964. And that was from a uh, line that was fed up uh, Grosbeck to North Avenue and into that basically that section 36 of the township. But as I had mentioned in that previous meeting, in order for us to tie back into Mount Clemens, we would have to put in a lot of infrastructure in order for us to accomplish that. Um, there is a big elevation difference between where that plant is and, the, for example, the northwest corner of the township. So you, you got to pump water up there. You can't rely on the pressure that you're getting from the, the treatment plant uh, in order to push that water up, uphill. Unfortunately, the water mains, the oldest water mains are in the township, and we still have some of those water mains in place that were built in the 60s that would not be able to take the kind of pressure that we would have to put in the system in order to force that water up. So you're looking at pressure districts pumping to move that water. You also need a second source so that, for example, if you had one line coming from Mount Clemens and that line broke, the entire township would be out of water until that line got fixed. So normally a uh, community, especially of this size, would have two sources of water um, so that you'd have a system reliability. Great Lakes Water Authority, the water main that feeds us, um, if there's a break, and we've had breaks on the 24-mile line, the last one I think was in Shelby Township, um, can be fed from the, the extension down into Clinton Township and Harrison Township. They can push north. The pressure's not great, but we can still survive. So that's you know one of the things that the MDQ or Eagle would be looking at if we were to do anything like that. And this is a totally different question. If an re individual resident wanted to install a cistern 
to capture rainwater and use that for purposes of irrigation, is there an ordinance that would be violated or would there be any penalty associated with that to your knowledge of the... No, a, a rain barrel, which is I think what you're describing, would be perfectly acceptable under our ordinance. Well, I, I, I've seen some rather large um, vessels that I presume are buried underground. Is that, I mean, we're maybe talking about five or 600 gallon. Is, it, is that something that would violate a ordinance if someone were to put a submersible pump in there to pump the water out and channel all their rainwater from their downspouts into it? There's no ordinance that regulates that, okay. that type of facility that I, I'm aware of. Now, if it ended up being above ground, it was considered a structure, then the zoning ordinance would probably have some issues with regard to setback and those types of things. But if it was all underground, probably not. And is, is there any, it's been, it's been mentioned about, and I know this from SEMCOG meeting that regarding green infrastructure, that we have the separated lines for purposes of storm water, and that that gave us an advantage over other municipalities that didn't have those separated. Impervious surfaces such as our parking lot that was repaved uh, under that contract that uh, Dino Bucci was involved in, that's an impervious structure uh, or surface so that all that rainwater just basically goes down into the storm drain system and gets discharged into the, into the watershed, correct? Yeah, it goes into our detention basin that's north of the rec center and then discharges into the McBride drain, which is what, what runs across Broughton Road. Is there any requirements currently anticipated or proposed that there be what's called bioswells where some of this break dust and other uh, contaminants? Because the Washtenaw Drain Commissioner indicated at the presentation that our water quality in Michigan is low or poor, he said because of um, all of these contaminants being flushed into our water sheds. Um, is there any uh, current proposals that we use uh, structures for surfacing uh, our, our, our lands, our pavements, that will absorb some of the water? Because I understand that we'll, Nature is very good at grass and trees and everything at absorbing water and not forcing it all to be flushed down into uh, the storm drain system. Is there any requirements to make developers incorporate any of those t technologies or new building practices? Yes, the Macomb County Office of Public Works does have those types of requirements for anybody that is connecting to their drain. I think the, the Department of Roads has similar um, requirements. Um, where we would step in um, when we don't, you know, normally we don't have jurisdiction over the outlet. We let the county um, agencies handle that. Um, but we would, in, in an area where um, we have total control, we would adopt the county's stormwater standards. Um, but I should mention that the, the three counties, Oakland, Macomb, and uh, Wayne County, are right now talking about adopting more of a regional stormwater standard. So we're waiting to see what that looks like. It might be something that we bring to the board for adoption. And again, thank you. That will be the, my final question of the evening. Thank you to the members of the board, Madam Chair, and, and to all the participants. We appreciate your uh, information and your willingness to answer questions that have not been scripted. <laughs> thank you. Jay Lefke again, and thank you. Uh, what is our wholesale rate and my retail rate per unit? So on the water side, um, the unit charge is $15.14 per thousand cubic feet. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, a monthly fixed fee of $645,400. Okay. And what is the retail? And the, the difference between the retail that you're paying for water, the wholesale you're paying for water against the retail that I'm paying for water per unit. So we take that and we turn that into, where's, is the rate on there, Derry? Okay. Do you, that slide is yeah, right there, there you go. So $4.40 plus the 
um, $16 service charge is what we turn that into. I wasn't fortunate enough to be here at the meeting where they raised the rates, but I, I did watch it on a video. And at the end, it came to, well, we need to raise it to here. And then Roger, who's, I'm sorry, isn't here tonight, said, well, if that's it, let's just add a couple more tenths to it. What, what, what was up with that? I, I, get, I, I can't speak to what Yeah, I'm not. As I recall, what Roger had, I could be wrong, but I can go back and watch it. I think what Roger brought up, which was an issue that was brought up earlier tonight, was when was this right going to be effective to and wanted the public to know that. I don't necessarily know if that required a vote. That's why I voted with it, because I think it was going to happen anyway on that schedule when we raised it. I think that's what he chimed in on is, well, we have to make this retroactive, which it was inherently with the first vote, but you know, I, I, don't recall, I don't remember him saying to I add I don't recall the rates input. exactly, but just to throw a couple numbers out for, it was like you approved, it was recommended we raise it 4.8%. And Roger came up towards the end and said, let's just make it five. I think I voted down. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think may I don't know maybe it was sarcasm but that's not what we voted on. Okay, we didn't we didn't we didn't vote on Roger's recommendation if he did say that to, to go to five. Okay. And uh, my last thing, oh, I, yeah. I, I can add a little bit to that. I think as I recall, Mr. Krasminski made that comment two years ago when we adjusted yes. rates, and that motion was denied, and and that went down in, in defeat if I'm not mistaken, right? That's correct. Christy, mm -hmm. I don't think he made that comment this fall. And, and lastly, will you be publishing some sort of a thing about tonight's meeting with what issues were addressed and what the answers are? It, it is being videotaped. Yeah, well, but minutes will be provided yeah, as in, well. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. Thank you all very much again. You're welcome. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Kim Tack. I am new to Macomb. I'm coming from Harrison Township, and prior to that, I was in Warren. Uh, we built a new house here, and like probably most of the people here, when I got my last two water bills, I was quite astounded. Um, $535, and it's my husband and myself, I thought was exorbitant. So I went back in my own bank statements, and I looked at what I paid in Harrison Township, what I paid in Warren. It, my highest water bill, and it comes in Harrison Township with your trash pickup, there's other things included. It was $286. $535 for two people was exorbitant. Now, it's a new house, I got sod, so I'll give you, I thought I'd have a little bit higher, but two bills in a row, 500 plus dollars, was extremely high. And sitting here, I'm hearing that you don't even know if it's going to go up again next year. I'm not sure why we're paying more than other townships. In Warren, I used to pay $100 every three months. It seems like I'm retired. My, the money, I'm not getting any more money, but a 12.9% increase. And you guys do not allow any second meters so that when you water your grass in the middle of the night, you can at least get a cheaper rate because you don't, you're not using it for any sewage. I'm not understanding why this is the only township around that does not allow a second meter. A second meter would decrease a lot of that expense. Why should you pay sewage when you got a brand new lawn and you're watering? It seems to me a lot of money. And I'm, I'm really hopeful that, you know, at the next board meeting, um, you guys discuss how, how these rates are gone, because I'm sure my street, it's a brand new subdivision, there are a lot of retired people. 12.9%, nobody this has given me a 12.9% pay raise. It's too high. It, it's really too high. Water bills shouldn't cost you more than a, a house payment or a car payment. It's, uh, I don't know. I am just putting it out there that I really believe that you need to research it a little bit better. And the fact that you did vote on this on the 25th of September, uh, I have a lot of lawyers in my family, I have a large family, and all of them said you cannot make it retroactive, it's illegal. And I heard somebody else also say it is illegal. Now, you may say that it went through July 1st. This board did not vote on it until July 25th. 
which means it was retroactive. That, I'm not sure that was fair either, to get a bill in the first week of October that was even higher than the last $500 bill I got. I was shocked. And I have a brother who lives here, um, and he, you know he's been complaining, but I guess I didn't realize how high it was until I came, I, I got my last two bills. My first bill was $96. It was right in line with what I would have gotten somewhere else. But this, I, I think it's, it's out of line. Or we have to decide that meter should be allowed. Because if you are putting a meter on that's going to give you a reduced rate on watering your outside garden or whatever you have, your lawn, it, that seems like a fair thing. If the water rate's going to keep going up, there has to be a way for us residents to, to uh, try to save ourselves some cost. And a meter would really help a lot. Ma'am, if I may. Would you be opposed to us pulling up your water bill and looking at your history and having the ones that can go through it and possibly explain to you where you sure. might have peaked and it would have caused your bill to spike so high? Would you be opposed to that? No, not at all. We have the ability to do that if you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all. Cause you're going to see two $500 bills in a row. Well, one was 535 The other was 490 Go ahead. If you could provide um, the table over there with your information, they can pull it up and we'll walk you through it. And it, it might be helpful to you. That's what my hope would be. While we wait, we to to not that I'm, I, I happen to live here, but I've been in municipal government a long time. And I'm, I do have to say, though, that in terms of the tax amount that I pay for the township, in terms of the millage and the tax rate, what is it, five, six mills, just township only, mm -hmm. if that? Mm -hmm. I mean, you compare that to Warren, I think Warren is at 30 some mills for well, I haven't now, been Warren in a long time. All I'm saying is, if you look at the whole combined thing, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the township board, I'm just as another resident speaking right now, but I do want to get into the sewer, the separate sewer meter. I understand what you're saying on the separate sewer meter. When you irrigate, that water doesn't go into the sewer system. Why should you pay? It makes absolute sense. However, the sewer cost this township has to pay is fixed. They owe $12 million to the GLWA. So if you're not paying that, they've got to get that money somehow. How does every other, every, I, mean, I know, I know, I know. Well, no, let me ask about the separate meter, though. If they it's lose, if they, no, they're allowed to do that. Oh, it's just that then, know. right, those people take advantage of it, and if it makes sense to them and they break even from it after so many years, after the plumber and all that, they may make out individually. But everyone else who doesn't do that is paying the higher rate, a higher rate, to offset what you're not paying because because it's a fixed amount the township owes 12 million dollars if they're not given the rev revenue from you they've got to get it from everywhere else and if you then theoretically say well let's say everyone got a separate meter on their irrigation they still owe 12 million dollars where do they get that revenue from so that's the conundrum It, I mean, I used the canal. I lived on the water, so I didn't have a problem. I, I just sucked it out of the canal, voila, we're done. But every other house I've lived in, I've had a meter. And how do all those other cities, how are they? They charge them? more for everyone who doesn't do that. That's all. We checked with Harrison Township. The, the, their sewage rate is $6.93 a unit. Comb Townships is $4.18. That's, that's what we're trying to say, is that the, the money has to be made up somewhere. And because it's, it's revenue lost in the sewer system, it has to be made up in a rate increase on the sewer system. Most of the people in Harrison Township have meters, second meters, or they get the water out of the That's canal. why they have a higher so rate. their rate is higher because of that. To, ha right. to say that's the reason, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't buy it. I think if I'm not using sewage, why should I pay that sewage fee? Because you not only went 9.9% .9 on my water, then you turned around and did another 2. Point, what was it? on the sewage. Yeah. So you had, we had a double, a double hit. And I, I'm just, I just am not sure why. 
Here's another interesting thing that we, we asked the, of the communities that did have a second meter, how much participation do you think that, that they had? Harrison Township was the highest, and that was at 50%. Um, the others were in the neighborhood of 25, 30, or 15 percent. So even in the communities that do have a second meter, you're not getting hmm. everybody participating. I've owned a house for 42 years somewhere, and I've never not been able to have a meter. This is the first time in 42 years I can't have a meter. And I, I, I don't understand it, because it does make it so much cheaper yes, for Trump, anybody who's willing to it. it. Because why should I pay sewage on water? You know I'm not flushing, I'm not putting into the sewage system. There's no reason, if you ask me, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding it, that everybody has to incur the cost, yes, but how come the cost is so high? We, again, we, because of the expense of treating the, the sewage and, and the rate increase, as well as what a customer would spend in trying to put a meter into their house, for, for a good chunk of the residents, there isn't the payback that is necessary to accommodate or to, to pay for that meter. So, so you know, what, what we've- They're not expensive, they're really not. So I live in Clinton Township and I put one in at the end of April in my home and it cost me $1,500. That included all the permitting fees, the plumber to come in and install it, what have you. This summer I saved about $150 total by having the second meter. So I have $1,500. Correct, correct. $150. Clinton Township rates are actually a little bit more expensive than the Please, please. But to pay back, so a $1,500 expense, saving $150 a summer, that's a t that's 10 years till I could get that money back. But, but, well, but, people I know don't, I mean, my husband's a mechanic, mm -hmm. so we put it in ourselves. I mean, it's not like, and you know what, I'm not saying that that's not even the right answer. But Excuse me, ma'am. Can you go to the podium? Because when they're videoing it and people are watching back, they won't get to benefit from what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I think I was talking about the meter. And, the, the, you know, that the, everywhere I've lived in 42 years, I have been able to have a second meter because the water is not going through the sewer. It seems to pay sewage on it is a, is a waste of money. It's a waste of my money that I don't really want it to pay. Um, and I've never, in Harrison Township, as I was saying, my highest bill was 286. Are these my bills? Yes. Okay. No, no, this, no, no, this, is, no this, this is an not. example. This is somebody else because I didn't pay 620. Want me, to, want me to explain this? Sure, okay. I would. This is software that we put in a couple of years ago you have a new home, so you don't have a lot of history, but on the top is your history, okay? Any resident can pull this up and look at their water. This is your history. You're saying you had a $100 bill when you first moved in there. That was because in line two, or column two, Crystal, uh, you used um, 13 units of water, okay, for that $100 bill. 13 units in the first column, you see 13? Yes. Okay, that's the read on it. Okay. So um, you, that's why you had a $96 bill. Up on the top, you used 88 units of water in the second column. 84. 84. 84. 84. Mm -hmm. Where do you see 84? I see 88 right here. Oh, we're it's going over here. Okay. You ate. I'm looking at the usage. I'm not looking at the read. I'm looking at the usage, which is the second column. So you used 88 units up there. That's why you had the 500 and some dollar bill. The chart on the bottom is when you were starting your home, looks like probably when they were building it. And then it went up. There's the chart, you know, how much usage you used. You can see in June, you peaked up here in the second dot, <laughs> and then when in September it went all the way up there. So well, you can tell you. I kind understand. Of I got new side. We didn't have any dirt. I mean, we had dirt right. prior to that. So all those low bills, but and now winter's coming. Hopefully, it's going to go down. Right. But I wouldn't have had all those exorbitant bills had I had a second meter. I would have not had to pay sewage on all because when you well, get you new side, pay, you, you have to water three sewage. times a day. You didn't pay sewage on 
the 88 units. You only paid it to 40 units. So you actually units saved money water. on that one. So if we cap out at 40 units on our sewage charge, you would have been charged 88 on that second bill. I guess I didn't right. know that. Right. So that's, why, that's why I wanted to bring it up so that we can explain that to you because I think a lot of people don't know that. So when you exceed uh, 40 units in your water and sewage, it's capped at 40. Right. So you don't pay the extra 44 units that you used in sewage. All right. It's, I, I still think a second meter, I would really hope that you guys discuss it at the next meeting because I think that it would benefit many people, not so, just me. Just so you know, if we were to do a second meter, the 40 unit cap goes away and you would have been charged an additional 48 units in, on your sewage meter. Does that make sense? If, if you didn't have a second meter, if the township went to a second meter and you didn't have the second meter, then you'd be charged all 98 units. That's the way the other communities that have a second meter work. Well, the second, the second, the way it worked in Harrison Township, because I had it for 17 years, I mean, near the end, we got a pump and, and pumped out of the canal. But prior to that, the way it worked is anything that went from the outside pumps um, for watering the garden or watering the grass was on a separate bill. Now, in the winter time, I would get a $16 charge that I had to pay just to have that meter, even though all the tubes were blown out, we didn't need it, but we paid a $16 charge. That's still more beneficial than paying the 44 or 40 that you cap out on, that 48 extra. It seems to me more beneficial to have a second meter and ha at a lower rate because it's not water that you're going into your sewage system. There's, it doesn't seem to me when it's going into your grass that it should be, you should have to pay sewage on it. Um, it. It's just something to think about. I really wish you'd think about it and look into it because in, in all the communities I've lived in, I've never not been able to have one. And with a water bill like that, it's like it makes you not want to stay in Macomb because that's, a, that's more than a car payment. That's a car payment and insurance for a lot of people. Um, Three months. At least. Bills. Thank you for your time. Thank we, you. We, just to let you know also, we have what uh, you can look at, your, not you so much because you don't have a big history, but if somebody has a, their history, they can look at how much they spent for a year on water, and then you can set it up in, on the online where you can have reoccurring payments, and you can do it a monthly. So say I just had a lady who called and talked about it. She, her bill, bill was $1,300 for the year. If she were to take and put $100 uh, payment um, each month, her water would have been paid because she had a large amount go to taxes. So we set reoccurring payments up so we can help you budget a little bit better and, and that you wouldn't have that $500 hit all at once. So that is out there for residents too. <laughs> Madam Chair, I just want to respond to that too about the meters and about looking into it. Um, Again, going back to, you know, things at a meeting are just kind of a snapshot. Um, I think I called Jerry, I don't know, maybe July talked about second meters. Um, I had some of those questions answered for myself, and I, I hope some of those questions are being answered. Now, it's not my township. It's your township. If residents want to keep pushing the second meter and, and we keep looking into that or a water tower, I think we should keep those discussions open and that communication open. But I'm speaking for myself as a board member, I have looked into those options and I've talked to you about it. And is there, an, is there another cost to involved with, to the township? Now, like we said, Crystal, she used an example of $1,500 in Clinton. That would be to the homeowner. Does the township itself take on an expense to run that second meter? I think that's an important thing to talk about too because that is tax dollars that would have to go into that. Well, currently we have roughly 29,000 accounts, okay. um, roughly 26, 27,000 of them are residential. So, I mean, if, if even 50% of those 26,000 accounts went to the second meter, Obviously, we're now managing 50,000 accounts, give or take a few. You know, we are definitely going to need more employees, um, not only in the water and sewer department, but I think probably in, in the treasury department as well. Um, you know, so that'll all need to be factored into a rate as well. 
um, and then also that second meter still will continue to have that quarterly service charge in those two billing cycles, which are non-irrigating months, non-irrigating cycles. Ready? Go ahead, sir. Okay. Sir, when you guys are done. Hi, my name is Steve Gong. I came here tonight to understand why the uh, water bills are going up. And I think I got the answer, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, is that um, the peak uh, water usage between uh, 11 p.m., I'm sorry, between 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. has gone up. That's primarily the biggest contributor to why the, the water bills have gone up. Is that true? That's correct. Okay. So if we were able to bring that water uses down, then the bills would go down, correct? Even yes. next year, as early not, as next year? No, not, not, not next year. We don't next renegotiate year. the contract with or have a, con a contract reopener Opening. with the Great Lakes Water Authority until th 2022. Okay, so really nothing can be done for no. the water rates till, till whenever, right? Right. They, so, okay. Right. So, so we have a few years to try to get the, the, the water rate usage down, right? Yes. So how, how is the township getting the word out that, hey, this is contributing to our high water rates? What, what's... What do you guys see as the, the main means of communication of that? Because I didn't know, quite honestly. It's, it's on every water bill, correct, Jerry? Right, it's on correct. every water bill. It's online. Um, he sends out a water report every... Once a year. Once a year. I understand. We, we try to put the information out there. We really yeah. work with yeah. residents. And, and, you know, my wife told me that too, all right? So, <laughs> so she, she explained that to me as well. But I, honestly, I still didn't know. And I think maybe a lot of people here are trying to understand that as well. That in addition the water to that, up? we've also, um, we have concerts in the park in the summertime. And they draw sometimes approximately 1,000 to 2,000, uh, hopefully, residents in the area. We, this year, this summer, we had a banner that was placed up um, at the entrance and exit of it that listed the water ordinance and the times. We also made announcements at those concerts. We also made announcements at board meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we also met to discuss other options of um, sending possibly a postcard to everybody in the spring, giving them a blast announcement, reminding them of the time frame. Um, it's also on our website. So we're, we're brainstorming. And if anybody else has any fantastic ideas that we haven't thought of, feel free to reach out to us. We're desperately trying yeah, so, to get the word out. So I, I did understand the, um, I don't know what you call it, the, uh, the watering ordinance. I did see that. Okay, I didn't draw the connection between the watering ordinance and the increased water bill. That didn't click to me. Okay. So, uh, Somehow maybe, relate that better. Yes. Okay. I, that's, that's my thought. So Great. I just wanted to share that. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I, uh, William Zeru, residence in 1988. Um, for the gentleman from the GLWA, you referenced uh, the cost of $12 million annually for sewer, for sewage, and that's a fixed amount over what time period? For a one year time period. One year. Yep. Okay. And how does the township calculate how that expense is spread? Is it based on the number of residents at X day, or do they factor in the growth of the township? Okay. I just want to know how that's calculated. Our, our financial expert basically takes that, um, that number as well as the number um, for uh, maintenance operation that the water and sewer department for the township has, adds that all up and essentially uh, divides it by the expected water or sewage rate. So the overall budget for the sewage, that $12 million is what percentage of the budget? For our township. 12, I'm sorry, 12% 12 you said? No, the twelve million dollars. Twelve million, 12, 12 million is your oh. is that twelve million of, is your wholesale cost. What what is your local cost for another, sewer? Uh, another two million. So what four, percentage of our expenses is that twelve million dollars related that, to sewer? The the twelve million dollars is strictly from the service provider. The the difference. I know, but it's calculated in our sewage rate, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. So if that $12 million is, say, 
10% or 20%, 30% of the overall budget cost in our township. That's fixed. So that piece is now gonna be spread over a growing population. Is that accounted for? It's, it's about usage. It's not, not about population. So what, what we do is we look at... But you what, have, excuse me, you have more participants paying usage related to that cost. No, the, the yes. bill that we get from the Great Lakes Water Authority is for what goes through that meter. A very small portion comes, very small portion, comes from those 500 new homes. Right, so maybe, it doesn't... Maybe you're not, I'm not expressing myself... You have a sewage cost fee, correct? Yes. On our bill, which accounts for paying that $12 million. Of that charge, how much of the budget is that $12 million as a percentage of that charge? You know, is it, again, is our sewage costs not to the resident, but to operate on an annual basis for that year, is it 120 million? So that 12 million accounts for 10%. You know, I'd mentioned earlier that, that the number that we had been given by uh, Don Lund, who d did our financials, is 14. So 14 million is what it costs for the sewer system overall, including the township's expenses. 12 of that comes from the, the, our service provider. So 12 out of the 14 million is the fee going to the GLWA? Yes, correct. Well, not through the county, yes. but yes. So 80, 85% of it's fixed. As a growing township, the cost per resident probably should be going down or held even related to that portion of the bill. As the flow increases, that that flow number has nothing to do with that because it's a fixed cost. No, no. It, it, over time, yeah. O over time, that our percentage of the the overall system does change, and but res residents are added to the system on a daily basis in a growing township. Right, but so is their flow. Each year, the county reevaluates that flow and, and refixes that fee for the next year. But my question is, is when you sit and look at the cost of that portion of the bill, what snapshot in time is that looked at? Is it looked at, you know, at right, X right. date? Or are you counting for, you know, building permits that are coming up and known? How is it? Is it a factor that that's a fixed cost? But we're a growing township. So that fixed cost is shared by more people every day. Yes, but again, the, that number is reevaluated each year. And, I, and so our percentage I'm not of. I'm debating that. Do you account for the growth of the township related to that fee? Yes, in their budget projections, I assume you look at the history of your of your usage, and if it's been growing, they can they say it's going to continue to grow, and they use that when they calculate that next year's rate. But the bottom line is, the 500 homes aren't adding a whole lot of money, but they're also using more. So the next year, so the township wide, you're going to pay more. But you're right, the residents are going to help offset that the new the new residents. But whenever everybody's they, helping offset that. So it's $12 million under the current year contract. What was it the prior year? Well, I don't have the, it went up 2.7% uh, this year. The Macomb Township, the increase countywide was 2.5%. There you, yep, there you go. The year before that, the countywide was 4.7. Now, you guys were 6.4%. And the reason you were higher was because you were taking a greater share of the volume in the county. That makes sense. So that's because we're it, growing. Right. But faster all, than in but you've also got more people to offset those that right. fixed amount. So that, that may answer your question. Right. 
it's a it, so that was a nominal increase and i can accept that if you go back to the other chart of the overall rates the three the current year next year and the prior two years um, no you had the the other previous slide three out of the four years we are significantly higher than the average yeah can you respond to that because some of the increases relative to the average are very significant yes they are and those are footnoted if you have the handout it doesn't see that show up that great on the screen but in 2017 the glwa increase average 4.3 percent increase to macomb township 7.5 percent the footnote 2.6 percent you guys uh, were higher but 2.6 percent was due to contract reopeners by other communities so you guys didn't reopen your contracts others reopened it and shaved down their peaks or shaved down their max days and you guys couldn't because you couldn't reopen so you had to take a bigger share of the pie right 2018 i don't think we need to explain 2019 you were a little 3.1 percent not bad overall but still higher than the average because the second round of contract reopeners and you guys didn't get to partake in that round of reopeners either your year was 2020 you finally get to reopen right mm -hmm. and and you can maybe make up some ground on others and lo and behold you reopen but you have to reopen to higher peaking because the residents are not are are using water at the wrong time okay so so if you, you go you've back kind to, of you've if you been go harmed. back to the chart where it shows the usage per hour and i forgive me i don't have the handout or um two things one why was that the date selected that date was selected because that was the the uh, peak demand day for the S summer system wide yeah okay. whenever the system pumps the highest day that's the date and they look at every community and they see how each community did and year over year say over the last two or three years how did that bar chart change it, it this is down quite a bit from the peak that we had in 2016 for example so it went our uh, cycle throughout the day actually went down but our rates go up you have to keep in mind that this is for this summer that contract reopener was last year so it was using previous years information we we're we're putting this up to illustrate that this year I we we think that we gained some ground here if if we can keep this up in 2022 when we have our contract reopener we can point to this and say hey we don't need to be at 41.7 we can come down but that's going to be all relative to how we do the next three years Good. and i think um, it's let me interrupt i think it's important if they exceed their peak or we we pay what double there, there's a punitive factor by exceeding you think well you know heck just keep my peaking low and if i exceed then i'll i'll pay a little but it's punitive right so it really makes you, and that's why these guys negotiated the contract and said, we can't pay that two times fee. We have to adjust to where we think our residents are using it right. and encourage our residents to not use it during those hours so that in four years now we can achieve the savings. Okay, great. And one last point. I know this is a sticky issue tonight, but I am very happy to live in Macomb Township because I do think it is one of the best run um, municipalities in the state so thank you thank you thank you thank you Jay Lampke again I said last time it was my last question I lied <laughs> while I was sitting back there I googled and surprise Arizona a s suburb of Phoenix in the desert their monthly residential water base fee is $4.25 for 4,488 gallons of water from October through May and 7,480 gallons from June through September. Great Lakes water, 
what's up with that? I'd have to convert the gallons to... Uh, 750 to gallons M is MGD. a unit. And this is a flat rate for that much. That's like six units for $4.25 for a flat rate for a month. I, my bill was much higher than that for 13 units for three months. And I just, and I, they can't blame the township for this one because they, we got to pay what they're charging. They're ripping us off. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, if I may, I want to go back to, can we look at the, this one right here? If you're looking at your chart, I just want to bring one other thing up. The other lady that we had we had a new home, so she couldn't do this. What you need to do is you need to look at your usage that you used this particular month, say the when it was when you were watering when the higher bills came in. Look at the usage that you used this year, and then compare it to the usage that you used last year. Don't compare it to the previous bill. Go back to see what you did last year at this time, and you'll get a little bit better idea of how much things went up. Um, you know, if you watered more or whatever. But that, that'll be, um, this is a very helpful tool to see. You can see the um, chart on the bottom, the gram, graph that they used, where they were using a lot of water, and when they were not. This one is a particularly busy one, too. We have a lot of them that are have cut down on their watering and they're kind of flat. So you can tell when people have used water and when they haven't. But always compare not to the previous bill, but to your bill that you had last year. And look at the usage, how many units that you used uh, on there as well. So use that as a tool to see how much water you're using. Hello, my name is Ray Conwallis K. I live in the Apple in the um Plum Grove subdivision on Apple Lane. Two questions. I'd like to know what is the increase that you proposed f right now and in July, what is going to be the increase? Because obviously you don't know. So it could go way up. And us residents here in Macomb Township could be way up with the water bill. Am I correct? Our service providers needed to go through their financial analysis to figure out what their rate is going to be to us before we can figure out what our new rate is. And that is normally done, the Great Lakes Water Authority has a series of four meetings. They call them their rate rollout meetings where they talk about all the things that go into setting those rates. But we don't normally get that the actual rate information from the Great Lakes Water Authority until at least late January. Um, and then I think it goes to their board in, in February. And then at, after that, and then we get ours on the water side, but then on the sewer side, the county gets it, and then they have, or OMID gets it, and they have to do their analysis, and then the MID gets it, they have to do their analysis, so we might not get the information from the county until maybe May or so. So all of that is done in the first six months of the year. So before so with the, the new July rate, 1st. My January bill is going to be higher no matter what, and my July bill, well, and it goes every three months. So January bill is going to be coming. So that's going to have an increase. And then in March, not in March, well, the following three months, I'll have another increase, correct? Our, our current rate is set right now until we receive. What is that set rate? What's highlighted in blue are the current rates. Okay. The variable rates and then the fixed fees are down below. And in July of next year, you don't know what the rate will be. We, 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 we do not. So let's say we could possibly, you could be up to $30 or more, more a month. So $30 times six. So you're looking at a $360 increase a year over water. Again, we, we won't know that until they provide us with that, that information. I think Brian has explained that he doesn't anticipate um, a big change from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Um, going you know, into next year because there aren't contract reopeners on the water side. Okay, all right.
Williams, Rue, one last question I forgot to ask. Once you start enforcing the ordinance and start collecting fees that you may charge people uh, for violation, um, where do those funds get deposited or counted to? Is it to the water department or is it the general fund? Water. Water? Water. Great, thank you. So with the last question, thank you, John Parkinson again. Um, with the last question um, to the board. So we're gonna impose fees on people who water during peak times, correct? And you asked us to squeal on our neighbors. Personally, I have a problem with that. If you have a problem with your neighbor, Bible says if you have a problem with your neighbor, go to your neighbor, talk to them first. Nonetheless, let's say I don't have irrigation hooked up, my cut my line, I don't do it, but let's say I wasn't watering and somebody said he was watering. What are your factors? What are you gonna be do? What, what's the safety net in there for us to say that wasn't us, you know? I mean, it's like kind of like the red flag laws, you know? The boy who cried wolf or whatever, you know, somebody says, hey, he shouldn't have that and, you know, but I could say any one of these residents were watering their lawn during pink time but yet I have no proof. Mr. Parkerson, we did take in that into consideration. And Mr. Um, Wangling, could you walk them through? We're, they're gonna receive the notification, but the code enforcement is gonna go out there and they're going to observe, unless they see it themselves, the citation won't be issued. They're going to give notice that there was an alert, that there was watering at that time. There will be uh, the watering ordinance attached to it, giving them the hours. But until they actually physically see it happening, the citation would not be issued. Right. So then again, it's hearsay. But it alerts them. They have them on a sure. list, and they're, they're aware of the area, and they'll monitor it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Christine Garland. Oh, who do we call? What number? Who do we call if we see somebody watering, and we want to let you know? This the... Water busters. The number on the water. <laughs> the num <laughs> Call the water department. The Call the water department. Is it the number on the water bill? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, good. Anyway, but my question is I'm a little confused because I, from what I understand, you reopened our contract. We have to pay a higher rate because we didn't, you know, we used too much water in the peak times. So we have a higher rate now. So that's fixed until 2022, right? Correct. So why am I hearing that the rates might go up even more? Are there some other ways our water bill is going to increase next year? I don't, well, I don't understand. Yeah, the methodology is fixed over the four years. You're, you have that higher peaking factor for at least four years, right? Well, three till 22. Well, true, three. You're still going to have annual increases for the cost of providing water and sewer those three years. So when they're just saying it's fixed for those next three out of four years, it's because the peaking's not going to change over that next three-year period. But you will still have annual typical increases each and every year. Why, Why annual typical increases? Well, people, oh. people get paid more, right? Do you Really? Nope. No. <laughs> so no, cost of living is is typically. I mean, GLWA is it's a four percent increase is the most they can do on their budget. It doesn't mean charges aren't going to go up that much, but we look at the budget each and every year. Um, but we shouldn't be expecting anything like we just experienced. Correct. Absolutely. Which was horrific. I've never right. seen water bills. Nobody has like this. This is really unprecedented i agree done but that, that's all that's all i'm done good night <laughs> madam chair thank you for having this i appreciate it um my question is sitting here and i appreciate everybody informing everybody exactly why our bills are what they are but i want to know who's got a solution for it i see storage as a huge solution but it's kind of like nobody's jumping on it and if we're aware of it since 2012, why isn't anybody on it now? 
So I think that somebody needs to take that rein and you know, start discussing why, why, we know why we're in this, because obviously it was a bad contract, that's what my point of view is. And too bad we can't um, go in and renegotiate that contract, because three years from now is a big, is a large amount of time. Um, but in the meantime, in those three years, I think we should try to find solutions instead of just discuss, I mean, I know we need to discuss why it is like this, but let's find solutions. People come up with ideas right now. I mean, we're all discussing it, but I've not heard anything except you know, the gentleman in the center there discussing that our, our, you know, our light in, at the end of the tunnel might be storage. So let's jump on it, that's all. Ms. Cusimano, yeah. um, just so you're aware, when we went through this whole analysis and we realized the situation and the increase in rates, we did discuss what do we do from here. And um, Mr. Van Tiflin did mention that the numbers that we had for um, ground storage was in the approximate area of $8 million and a water tower was 15 to 20, but those numbers were calculated many years ago. We are looking into that now to see um, where, where we have the potential to do ground storage if we do and or water storage and what the cost would be today to do that. In the meantime, we have next year to hopefully continue to in reinforce the water ordinance, encourage the residents to water at the pr appropriate times and hopefully get that peak down so we don't have to go to that expense, but we're looking to have it as plan B. If we find that we just can't get the word out there and we're just gonna continue to peak, then that's something we need to look into as an expense with the hopes of a savings in the future. So we are looking into that and we're preparing to have the dollar amount for today to do that type of thing. Okay, you're welcome. Madam Chair. Um, I just wanna give kudos to Mr. Van Tiflin and Mr. Um, Wangelin. Yeah. They are constantly looking at things for the residents. Um, Mr. Van Tiflin lives here. Uh, Mr. Baker lives here, and they pay water bills too. They're always constantly looking at things, how to save money, and they do studies all the time. I just want to give them kudos for that because I don't think anybody realizes how much work they do for that. Thank you. Madam Chair, one more thing, if I may. One thing that wasn't discussed tonight, and I would like for Mr. Van Tiflin to address it, and Mr. Baker, if possible, is what would be the consequence if we hadn't gone with the recommended uh, increase. If you could um, enlighten everybody on that, because it was a difficult decision. I pay, the ta I pay my water bill as well. So there was a consequence to us not um, approving that um, increase. And if you could discuss that with everybody, because we were only privy to that information, not everybody. So the, the rates that we have from the Great Lakes Water Authority are are what they are. They're in compliance with the agreement that we have with the Great Lakes Water Authority. So if we wouldn't have approved that rate increase, what would have happened is we would have started pulling money out of the reserve uh, in, you know, for whatever time period, it, and it compounds. So if you don't pass along this year and you do something much smaller, then next year it becomes a bigger issue, so you're pulling more money out of reserves. And eventually you drain your reserve and, and you know you start running the the system in, in a negative um, in a capacity. So, you know, although it was a hard decision, it kept the water and sewer fund viable so that we can pay for the improvements that we need to make along 23 Mile Road and other places. Um, we are spending down that reserve over the next few years. We've got a capital improvement program that shows that. Um, so, you know, the, the more you don't fund properly, the, the worse position that you're gonna put yourself into in the in the future also just to add on to that i mean we just recently sat in a meeting where all of those that all of us that live in the south end of the township have older pipelines and that are going to require repair and update um, in our sewer system due to all the ctv and you've been doing so that's all accounted for in that increase is that we have potential things that have to be corrected in the infrastructure so that we don't have major problems in the future the state is mandating asset management for communities like Macomb Township of a certain size, certain customer base. Um, we had a, a, a lot of work done on the sanitary sewer side a few years ago through our SAW grant. We received $2 million from the state of Michigan 
um, we matched that with another $500,000 where we went in and you know, TV'd uh, a lot of our sewer lines to make uh, assessments of them. Um, we did a, f a financial analysis of the capital improvement program and a financial analysis to figure out what our rate should be. That was all part of our SAW grant. Um, likewise, there's a requirement that the state has on the water main side. Unfortunately, there is no grant program for that, but it's all part of the state trying to mandate to the locals that we watch our system so we don't run into the situation that a lot of older communities have where they don't have the money but they have very aging and infrastructure that needs help but they have no way of paying for it so i have worked you know when i was a consultant i worked in some municipalities that had no money and i would approach them and say this needs to be done and they would say that's great but you got to find me some grant money because we don't have any money to to pay for this you know what, what our goal is is to never put macomb township into that position thank you if i if i can add one more thing um I do want to, well, they may have left, but the GLWA does offer for, for low-income residents uh, a RAP program, which is the Ros Water Residential Assistance Program, where it will help fund water and sewer bills. And all the communities are, are eligible to participate. Macomb Township participates. Um, Macomb County gets um, its share of the money from GLWA in order to help um, help Macomb County residents. Unfortunately, we have not been participating as much and we've been not spending all the money allocated to us. So uh, Detroit and Flint have been using some of that money. So I would encourage anyone, I think the, the township has information on their website, but if you are low income, um, I just changed it where it used to be a two year limit. Now, if you're a senior or disabled, there's, there's no time limit if you qualify. So I would encourage those who are who are um, low income and need uh, assistance on their water and sewer bills to look into that RAP program from the GLWA. Thank you, Mr. Baker. That's very useful. I'm, I'm not gonna admit to being a liar, but I have one last comment and question. I wanna again tell, say publicly that Mr. Wanglin and Mr. Van Tiflin have always been professional in all their dealings with us. We've been here for 17, 18 years. I find them to be very knowledgeable and professional and able to answer questions, and thank you for that. It is true that if you don't change the status quo, you will operate at a deficit. If you make a bad deal on a used car, you will pay on the bad deal on that contract. These contracts have been going on and being amended and voted unanimously, and we're told that we, unfortunately, regrettably, there's no other options. My initial presentation, I set forth all types of different options, including incurrence of debt, special tax districts, and all dis no disrespect to Ms. Posey down in the southern areas of the township, but if you had a free ride down there because no one charged the right rates, 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 25 years ago to anticipate this, why should the northern development have to foot the bill through operations? And that brings me to, so the status quo isn't working. People are, it, water is becoming unaffordable. There's a lot of people on fixed incomes. And I know people in the pu public sector say, well, you get a cost of living increase all the time. At the colleges, everyone gets step pay increases, but they say they haven't gotten a pay increase on the step pay increases for a year or two. So there's all these euphemisms floating around. It gets very complex. But the bottom line is we always pay more. And, um, and that's unacceptable, I believe, as, as a conservative, a fiscal conservative. These, these other alternatives should be fully explored. Everything needs to be broken down, granulized, and each one of these aspects needs, can we save money here? Can we save money by having water storage? Can we save money by um, changing the way we approach with special assessment districts versus um, just uh, uh, lumping everyone together and then making a massive div uh, division in macro? And I want to just make one final comment. At the end of the Great Lakes Water Authority, what happens? For years and years and years, the city of Detroit 
did not make its proper investments in its infrastructure in older, um, in older communities. So now they're taking the money because they're not using debt, they're using operation uh, revenues to make the repairs to the infrastructure, which, you know, again, is that the only alternative? But we're all paying for it as customers because they're doing the same thing on a much larger level. They're saying we're looking at all the expenses and we're going to have to charge X, Y, and Z communities in order to pay for these expenses. So if you didn't do any maintenance and repair for 40 years down in the city of Detroit and you're still providing water and sewage service to abandoned areas that have been leveled, then we pay for it up here. And guess what happens, everyone? The, the, the little hidden secret is at the end of the, four, I think it's a 40-year term, it all gets turned back to the city of Detroit. So it's possible that it all starts over again. My point is, is that we need to explore all these different uh, aspects of why we're paying more and not just get it all lost in the tall grass. Thank you again for having this uh, <coughs> meeting so that these issues can be addressed. William Zeru again, um, related to recent comments about expenses related to the southern end of the township. And yes, there are going to be more repair costs, right? But also, as Mr. Van Tuflin said, we're expanding our system 23 mile and north. And one of the four cost factors from the GLWA is push factor. Well, the people at the north end aren't paying an incremental increase to push the water that much further. So I saw it as an offset, because initially I was kind of irritated because one of those factors is the push rate. But I understand that the south end is an older infrastructure and will have more costs. And we've been paying related to our use for 20, 30 years to help build the, uh, the fund and reserve fund. So, you know, you can look at it both ways. So if the residents, if 23 mile might be the new eight mile, if they want to pay for the new pumping requirements and things of that nature, because the population is not that dense up there yet, the cost per household would be very expensive. So that's my point. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I would like to uh, point out one thing, and it was kind of touched on a little bit, but um, I just want to tell you that uh, Mr. Wanglin has insisted that every new homeowner be provided a copy of the ordinance and the explanation for the watering, I'll call it a ban for nothing else. So everyone that brings in a homestead affidavit is given that information. So for them to say to a uh, ordinance enforcement, I didn't know that I couldn't water at a, such, such, a, such and such a time. That's not true. Everyone is notified. It's on our website. Um, we're doing everything possible to inform the residents that Watering at the correct time is the main thing that is going to drop our rates, or at least keep them what they are now. If there isn't any other questions, I want to thank Mr. Baker again for coming. Thank you. And Mr. Waglin, Mr. Van Tiflin, and Ms. Kozak put an awful lot of work in this, and I thank them. And I hope you all had your questions answered. And we'll see you soon again. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.